Hello young lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my living room here in Vancouver, Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Thursday, February the 11th, 2021 and this is video number 95. Wow, a whole week has transpired and what have I been up to? Well, I'm going to catch you up on the things that I've been doing over the week. And uh, before I get going, I just want to wish anyone who is celebrating uh, the Lunar New Year this coming week or the festivities leading up to this weekend uh, a happy Lunar New Year. Gung hoi fa choi is what uh, we used to say in our household. I don't speak uh, Cantonese Chinese but uh, <laughs> I do know a few phrases that I kind of butcher along the way. Um, I'm half Chinese so uh, my dad and us as a family used to go and celebrate Chinese New Year every year. So uh, yeah, and if uh, you are celebrating any of your Valentine's festivities, I wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day for this weekend as well on the 14th of February. Uh, yeah, so what have I got to showcase this uh, coming episode? I have a finished object. I'll touch base lightly on a work in progress that I'm crocheting up a blanket. I have some happy mail. I have uh, some much anticipated merchandise in my Teespring store that I want to showcase and share with everyone. Yay! I have some uh, acquisitions and an update on uh, some uh, information on past order that I received uh, that I was missing an item from so I want to touch base on that too my hair is like going crazy <laughs> so yeah uh, if you are new to the channel I've set this channel up to talk about all of my fiber adventures so that is in knit crochet uh, dabble a little bit in hand dyeing of yarn as well as uh, where I purchase my yarn from so my acquisition points and talk about prices and if there are any sales along the way so if that sort of thing uh, interests you please stick around think about giving me a thumbs up and uh, becoming a fiber friend here amongst us uh, by hitting the subscribe button down below and to my fiber friends who are returning loving all of your comments uh, the tool episode that I had previously uploaded last week I had so much fun reading all of your favorite tools, what you uh, love using and uh, in your crafts. And it's given me some ideas for trying out future little tests on other tools as well that I had not even heard of. So uh, I'll, it's all valuable to me because if there is something out there that I haven't tried that I, I should try before investing in a large set of implements like I was talking about in that episode of wanting to get a whole interchangeable set of knitting needles and a whole wooden uh, kit of uh, different size crochet hooks. Uh, I would love uh, you know to try out all of the new tools that people had suggested so I'm going to hold back on that I have a, a review on this episode to talk about an Addy interchangeable set as well that I want to share with you as well as a furls hook my very first furls hook so yeah we'll check that out and uh, let's get going on the podcast the first thing I'm going to talk about is my finished object I'm wearing it it's a knitted object that I uh, knitted up and I just wove in my ends this morning. So, what do you think? I absolutely love this texture as well as the way it drapes and folds. So, it is using a couple of my newfound uh, passion, I guess, with knitting and stitch work. It's called the brioche stitch. I'm still in my infancy. I only can do the straight brioche up and down. I haven't done any trickery yet with like maneuvering the brioche uh, into uh, some pattern cabling or anything like that. That's way too above my, <laughs> I guess, skill level. But uh, right now I'm just loving the brioche stitch and I'm also doing some color work. So really really super drapey I love the feel of it the way that it folds in on itself when it uh, relaxes and it is another one of the cows that are 
kind of in between the snug fit as well as one that is a little bit more loose and fluid. Uh, I really do like the cowls that don't feel like they're strangling, uh, that have a little bit of air that breathes and circulates in them as well, which is lovely. So this is a uh, combination of two star, uh, two weights of yarn that I'm blending together, and one is a sock weight yarn, and the other one is a DK weight yarn. Even though that they say it is, um, no, they say it's a DK weight, but it's a lighter DK weight. So yeah, I'll just take it off so that we can talk about the construct a little bit. So, these are the little pops of color work that I did in between my brioche. Now when it sits like an accordion, it actually folds in on itself, so you just get to see the brioche. And when I'm moving around, you get to see this lovely work underneath of the color the color work in stockinette. Uh, so what I did was I worked the piece from this end, which is the top end, down to the bottom. And I just did some garter stitch in the beginning, then brioche, and then what they call a flea stitch with color work. Uh, and I am changing out my second or contrast color in every so many stitches. And back in again to a little bit of garter, back into the, uh, what is this one? Oh, it's the brioche. And and then one pearl bump row here, then back into stockinette with the color work and garter and so on and so forth. So there is a pattern that goes through the, the cowl length. And at the end here, I just did a, a ribbing, two by two ribbing with an I-cord bind off. So I wear it facing this way here. So this is the bottom part, this is the top part, and I just love the colors and how they worked up together. It does remind me of the style of dye-up job that I wanna uh, strive for in my makes. It's got the rich tones and it has that metallic feel, like a rusted, almost weathered look to the the piece like it's been uh, copper left out to weather it's turned it's turned a, a slightly green and um, and corroded feel I love that and the feel of the stitch and the fabric together that it's made it's super super squishy I love it I don't mind at all that it has an undulating edge because of the nature of the brioche stitch, it's quite a full fluffy stitch. And then the color work stitch is quite a dense and tighter stitch. So I don't mind that at all having a different, uh, what is it called, like a different gauge uh, in the fabric at all. So I'm gonna put it back on and we'll talk about the uh, yarn that I used. Absolutely, absolutely love, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Today's the perfect day for it as well because it is a little bit cooler in the apartment. Uh, I don't think that the hot water radiator has kicked in uh, yet. I think the settings are that during the day, morning-ish, kind of into the lunchtime, it does sort of uh, die down a little bit in the thermostat. So let's look at the yarn. So the two yarns that I used were the sock weight yarn help double was from Hobby Lobby and it's the Yarn Be Authentic Hand Dyed Tonal in the colorway uh, Hazel Basil. So it was a green colorway. I've got a little bit left that I can show you what it looks like. That's it there. An awesome, awesome tonal and it's a little shimmery as well. So it gives that metallic feel that I'm really loving. So that's that one. The second one, which is a brilliant, brilliant yarn. Oh, this one I should say is 100%. Uh, no, it's not, I lied. It is, doo -doo -doo. oh, it is 100% superwash merino wool. So that's what the makeup is is of that one and I held it together with Allerae Marmel. Uh, 
Ah, it's blowing out. There we go. Alare Marmel. And the colorway of this one is called Golden Gar Garnet. And it is a combination of cotton acrylic. They are saying it's very, very fine here. They are saying it is 58 cotton and 42 acrylic. And this is what they consider a DK weight. But I think it's it's roving, so it has uh, thinner parts and thicker parts. So I think they're gauging it from the thicker part because it does go into a, a two weight or a sport weight uh, style of thickness. And this is what gave the, uh, the fabric the kind of corroded look because this is what it is here. It is a mall of different colorways twisted together in a roving style, thick to thin twist. Just beautiful. So those two together. Just put all those bits back into my beautiful Crafty Floridian bag that was generously gifted to me by Penny Bolton. Hi Penny and hello Billy. So yeah, love that bag. Love it, love it, love it. So what I used was a little bit of a test on a set of needles here. They're interchangeable Addies and they're the twist and click variety. Metal tips and it is a 20 inch length uh, set of uh, circulars. And they are three, I think, three millimeter. I think it's, I'm gonna say a three millimeter set of knitting needles. And the cord is really nice. There's a little bit of memory in there, but not too much. Uh, but I had no difficulties at all flipping around or twisting the, the needles as I was working through this whole cowl. And just to show you a little bit on what I was talking about with the click lip section. I don't know whether you can see that, but really, really up close, there's the area where it clicks in at the base, just, uh, just there. And when the cords were, uh, when the stitches were going over that, they were getting jammed. Uh, so there was a little bit of uh, stickiness and traction there of the, the stitch work having to be forced across that lip. So just to show you uh, what how these interchange, I was loaned this set by one of my fiber friends out there. So hello, my fiber friend. So I also got the little Addy change pads, which help you grip onto the interchangeable uh, ends and the, uh, I guess the cord. And then you press it in and then turn and you hear it click and it comes loose. So this is the detachable part of the cord that you can reuse on the different ends. So yeah, you just line it up Give it a bit of a twist and turn it and hear the click and now it's locked in place. So that's how you change your thicknesses to your needles and uh, just in review of the needle, if I'm looking to buy a set, I probably wouldn't buy the Addies for my personal uh, preference because of the uh, little stepping part here that jams the stitches. So I loved using them though. They were they were very comfortable to use in hand. Uh, the tips were were great for picking stitches and not not uh, dropping stitches. So that was that was awesome. It's just that little connector part which is a little daunting for me to think that I would buy a full set and have have that complication I think I'm gonna steer away from it so uh, yeah that's the only make that I have catching you up on my blanket it's a crocheted blanket which I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook with and uh, there's a story about another five millimeter crochet hook which I tried out for this week as well which I'm gonna to get to in a bit but I'll just reach across here and I'll grab the blanket 
it's still a work in progress. So this is what I've got so far. I missed out on showing it to you last week. Uh, so this is where I'm at. So it is just a scrappy looking blanket where I'm utilizing this limeish green. It's very chartreuse and bright yellow green throughout the whole blanket and then I'm just switching out skeins until they run out then I'm changing the skeins up. So I have these base stripe colors panels that are, are obvious running through it. So I'm almost out of the yarn that I've got in this section here. So I will be changing up uh, the yarn again so there'll be another panel. Uh, probably around, I'm gonna say eight inches of each panel will be going through because it's a 100 gram skein of, uh, of yarn that I'm using. So I really, really like that. It is six, I'm gonna say six foot two long and it is around, at the moment, it's probably around two feet, like 24 inches in, in width and I'll be using it this way. So I'm just growing it to around five feet. So it'll be six feet by five feet and a nice uh, blanket to cover on the couch uh, when we're watching uh, shows. So I really, really like it. And the fabric is turning out nice and squishy uh, in the stitch that I'm doing. And the stitch is called the double slip stitch. So it gives the appearance of a knitted uh, ridge, like a ribbing, knitted ribbing. And it's the same on both sides. So it's a, a one row repeat, the, the, the technique of using the single, uh, the double slip stitch. And if I can remember, I'll put the tutorial that uh, taught me how to do the double slip stitch in the description box down below. So yeah, uh, what I'm using is four weight yarn. Everything's kind of like uh, four weight yarn in that blanket. And I'm running through a yarn that's over there. I won't get it. Some is hob a Hobby Lobby. Uh, I love this yarn. Some are variegated in uh, Cozy Baby, which is a Loops and Threads variety of variegated yarn. And uh, the main color is a Monster Ball that I got from a Spin Right, uh, a Spin right factory sale uh, that I'm busting through. It's 900 grams. So yeah, I think uh, I will probably showcase that in a little bit more of uh, future episodes when I get uh, some more on it as well. But it's coming along very, very nicely. So now I'm gonna talk about merchandise from my Teespring store. And this is one of the samples that I received. I do have another three samples on their way. Funny thing about uh, the Teespring store is that my order that I made a few items in, I don't know whether it's because they housed the actual physical garments or accessories in different parts of the United States, but it seems that uh, the tote bag is coming from a different place because that hasn't yet been shipped and the t-shirts are coming from another um, holding facility where they perhaps print the t-shirts because the, I got the t-shirt quicker, but I have a few more things coming, but this is one of them that arrived. Urban Yarn, welcome, welcome, welcome. And the quality of the t-shirt the is quite a nice quality. I would say it's not the, the top most range of t-shirts, but it's, it's a very durable and soft, cotton so I really really like the color and I took your advice when I was running a few test samples I think a couple months back before Christmas uh, I had a go at using Teespring just to see how long it took to ship and the quality of the work and it was really really well received and uh, there were a couple advice uh, that everyone was you know offering and I love I love those. So I came up with just the design that has the logo on top of the t-shirt with a little bit of a saying. The other design that you'll see in the Teespring store is uh, 
yarn lovers, which is <laughs> hello yarn lovers, which is another thing I say. And that one has a little bit more graphics on it. So if you're wanting something that's just, um, I guess, simple and the logo, there's this variety here, but then there's also one that has a little bit more of a graphic element on it as well. So I will link the Teespring store down below in the description box if you want to go and take a gander. And I'm thinking about uh, adding in new stuff maybe every six months. Uh, I have a couple of other t-shirts on the go right now, which I'm really, really thrilled about. And they may appear on bags as well and other things that Teespring offers in their store. So, uh, you know, take a look back every once in a while, you might see some new things. I'll showcase the other stuff as it comes in as well uh, so that you can see what type of uh, results come up with the Teespring purchases that I make. So now on to Happy Mail. You may recall a couple of videos back I did a custom order on a slouchy beanie and the I'll find it here in a photograph and it was for one of my hubby's colleagues. and. I received a beautiful thank you card from her. And this is it here. Absolutely love it, love it, love it. So a little bit about the card. She's written about this artist who makes the cards. Her name is Wendy Pecton. And this one in particular is called Baby Olive Moon. And my hubby's co-worker says every time she is in Victoria, which is a city on Vancouver Island, very close to where I'm living. It's probably around uh, ferry right away and then maybe an hour in a car. So, uh, you know, probably about four hours to get to Victoria. That's where this artist is based. So every time uh, Hubby's co-worker goes to Vancouver, she loves buying her cards. So this is one of them here. I won't read the message inside. It just uh, states that she's really super happy with the with the hat and how it fits, and the creative way that I came up with utilizing uh, some yarn that she had not expected uh, because of the fact that the, I ran out before the pattern had finished. So thank you, thank you, thank you to the recipient. Uh, of the hat and I really enjoyed the card and what was inside of it. Uh, it was not necessary but it will go well into the channel and uh, maybe me and hubby might spend some of it on Valentine's Day this weekend. Who knows? <laughs> It'll go to good use. So I really appreciate that. The next uh, thing that I want to showcase as well is happy mail that I received from our Emmy Phillips. Uh, all the way from the US and this is this box came I just love Emmy's beautiful way of packing things and labeling uh, all of her gifts that she's put in this in this box I know that these are her favorite things that she likes to use in her craft so I'm so <sighs> I'm so blessed to be on the receiving end of all of Emmy's favorite things. So thank you, thank you, Emmy, so much ahead of time. So let's start with the card. And what we have here is this beautiful card here. It says cocktails because adulting is hard. Love that, it's awesome. And, uh, this is a card that is made by her sister and it is Tinkerbell O'Brien and Becky O'Brien. So I will leave uh, whatever details that I can find on this make in the description box below because I believe perhaps maybe these are available to be sold. I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, Emmy, if you are able to maybe reach out to let me know whether or not uh, the details on the back here I can share with everyone that would be great but a beautiful beautiful card and a beautiful message thank you so much I won't read it and oh my goodness you won't believe this what I got in the box my first ever furl odyssey crochet tool. 
You know, as soon as I opened this box when it arrived, I wrote directly to Emmy, just showing my appreciation through words. And you know what, it's never enough. It never feels enough to just say thank you, but I am just beside myself because whenever I am shopping, something of this caliber, this tool, never makes it into my shopping cart because uh, maybe I'm frugal with my money. Maybe I think the tools that I have are good enough. So why, why be decadent? Uh, but as soon as I tried it out, which is what I did, I jumped in. It's the same. It's the same hook size as my Susan Bates five millimeter, which I'm using for the blanket. Oh my god, it was amazing. Now I am not sponsored by Ferls at all. So this is my honest opinion and I absolutely fell in love with it. Just beautiful. So this is the color that I got. It's kind of a, a kind of a red, a deep red color. And that's the, the head of it. You probably have seen these before. <laughs> I don't know why I'm showing it to you like, oh my God, it's so brand new. But it's been around the uh, the block a few times. It's just never reached my hands. And it's all I've always avoided putting it in the shopping cart when I've gone shopping. But this uh, was a dream. And what I liked about it too was to help my tension a little bit. The shaft area here, because I do kind of like glide in to stitches uh, overzealously, I guess. It's not like a little poke and then do my thing and then come out. I'm kind of like in there and going crazy. So I find that uh, that part of the the neck of the, of the tool helps to widen up the, the loops that I'm, or the stitch work that I'm making. So it makes it more of a relaxed, uh, a, ra a relaxed kind of like fabric. So I, I really enjoy it and I'm going to enjoy many more hours in studying and also utilizing it. Uh, so first hand use on my blanket and uh, it's kind of like a three, four weight yarn that I'm using. Uh, it's, it's working up really, really nice for me. Uh, so yeah. The other thing that I got was also a handcrafted wooden crochet tool and I will link down below the details on where this uh, can be uh, found. I believe it was a crafter who who makes uh, crochet hooks to sell uh, but if that's not the case then I won't leave anything down below uh, in the description box. It might just be a hobbyist that's doing it. I'm not too sure but it, it's like you kind of feel your way around to see where your hand suits the the grip and i really like that it's kind of it's kind of an interesting organic way of using a tool and it is a i believe it's a 5.5 yeah 5.5 or an eye hook and this one is more of what I'm used to. The 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 uh, depth of that hook that goes in is kind of similar to a Susan Bates uh, catch or a hook where the reserve is for the yarn. Uh, I haven't used this one yet, so I will give it a go. And uh, yes, Emmy, if the handle is something that I'm I experience difficulty with. Uh, I will definitely do what you suggested in your in your email as well. So th thank you for that. That's a beautiful and light uh, tool as well. I also got some more Hobby Lobby yarn here from uh, Yarnvi. <laughs> a lot of little stickers on there. They're so cute. And the reason why she picked this one particularly out, she circled it as well. It says Urban Chic. And the note that was on it was really cute. Uh, it is... It's Urban! Smiley face. And this, a uh, little bit about the yarn, it is 100% acrylic and uh, the colorway is called... Doo -doo -doo, Golden Grace. 
and it sorry it is 75 acrylic and 22 cotton I do lie uh, they're suggesting a 4.5 millimeter set of knitting needles or a 5 millimeter crochet hook uh, for a suggestion on tools to use and what else can I tell you about this uh, 100 grams and in that you get 275 yards or 252 meters very very super soft I believe I have some urban chic as well in my stash uh, that was gifted to me and it's in a different colorway it might be the same it kind of looks the same I think the one that I have has more of a yellow than a than the green here yellow green but I love these colors you know my colors green awesome so here's a card from that uh, Emmy has uh, sort of like explaining a little bit of who she is I believe that is her uh, dash of disdain is maybe her her Instagram name favorite stitch markers are on the back I like that one it's a lucky penny it's a penny with lucky uh, stamped in it it's amazing and Oh, she says here, oh, look, uh, I have an official logo for a project bag. Ah, lucky penny, I guess. That's awesome. <clears throat> I also have some darning needles in here with, with a note that says, best yarn weaving needles ever. Okay, well, let's see what they are. They're from SKC Knitting Accessory, and they are, I guess, darning needles. I can't wait to use them. They have got the loop on the top there for easy threading. So that's great. Thank you. I got some teas in here as well. Vanilla Caramel by... Uh, I think it's Big Bigelow or Bigelow, Bigelow. And these two here are Mighty Leaf Tea, which I've had before. These are so yummy, these teas. And the flavor is called Nectar African. Oh, sorry, I'm reading the French. Uh, organic African Nectar. I got two of those, delicious. And I also got a hand painted wooden, it's like a wooden, uh, I'm gonna say it almost looks like a tree ornament, maybe to go on the Christmas tree. Uh, it's uh, got a stamp back here called Lucid Wood. Now, I think Emmy wrote in her card that this is a maker that is around her area in Minneapolis. So uh, I will also look up Lucid Wood and see whether they have some, uh, some websites as well. So if you're interested, and I believe that might be the city that she lives in. Lovely, lovely, awesome. That will go on my tree next year when uh, Christmas comes around. The last little things in here, which I've already eaten some of, you know I did, were well, these uh, candies, they're like caramel candies. I think I wrote, raved about them so much in my last box that I got from Emmy that she thought that she'd add in a few more. Now this is only half of what was in there because I ate, <laughs> I ate them already. But they're like toffees, a uh, little chewy, hard, and then once you sort of get through the hardness in the centers, there is a little bit of um a whipped sugary delight there so love love them a lot so that's all of the wonderful gifts that I got that are some of Emmy's favorite things so thank you thank you for those love them love the hook how it worked up and when I get to my next project I'm gonna give this one a whirl as well uh, the next thing I've got to cover is a little bit of catch-up with uh, purchases that I made. Now, 
I got uh, two to talk about. One was Aberdeen. Now, I have made some another purchase to Aberdeen for different needles that I'm testing out before buying my full set of interchangeables. So I've got uh, a driftwood one coming from Lackey, uh, and I also have a, I think it's a Chagu Sharpie. So I'm gonna see uh, how those single ones work up first before buying a set. And yeah, I'll give you my review on those once they come in. They also uh, sent me the missing coffee shop or a coffee shop yarn which was part meant to be part of my order from a couple videos ago where hubby and I uh, talk about the comparison of premier yarn purchased from Aberdeen Wool Co and a purchase from uh, premier themselves so they were when I called them up oh I just love their customer service it was amazing I spoke to a lady down there, I believe her name's Amanda. So hi Amanda. Uh, and she said, oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. She apologized that there was no note in the, the box, but they didn't have this in stock. So when it came in, she uh, shipped it to me. And so I got my turquoise coffee shop colorway. And it is a light three. These are the details should you need them. There's a recommended hook size. It's really, really super soft. Uh, it did say it was called turquoise, the colorway. And in each of the, the cakes, you get 284 yards or 260 meters. And it is 100 grams, 15% wool and 85% acrylic. So with that, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to talk about in this particular episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Think about um, becoming a subscriber and joining us here amongst our fiber friends by hitting the uh, subscribe button down below. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe and enjoy your festivities, whatever you are getting up to for this weekend. If you are celebrating the Lunar Festival then or the Lunar New Year, please enjoy those festivities and if you are doing anything for Valentine's Day. Uh, I'll catch you up in the next episode and I'll see, see you next week. Bye for now.